Let's talk about Blackboard and how we use it. This is an example of one of my AP1 Blackboard shells. The things that are important, the course information, the course content, the announcements, my grades, and mail. Under course information, you have this folder start here. This should be where you're going to see these videos so that you can understand your syllabus, Blackboard use, McGraw-Hill Connect use. I'm hoping you watch them. But when you click this, you're going to get access to all those little videos. Instructor contact information. If you by chance did not program my cell phone number into your phone yet, you can look it up here. There's my cell phone. Here is my office number for the Alice campus. My Alice campus phone works, but I am only here two days a week. So it would be more advantageous for you to use my cell phone. As well, the three days a week that I'm in Kingsville, I do have an office phone. It has never worked right. So with that, use my cell phone. It's just easier. You can email me through Blackboard, but I said this in the syllabus video, I am terrible with email. I'm really good about checking my phone for texts, but I am terrible with email. If you need a response like in an hour, text me. If you need a response in three weeks, use email. If you are adamant that you want to use email, you can do that, but then please let me know that you sent me an email by texting my cell phone to say, hey, you need to check Blackboard. Of course, if you can text me, hey, you need to check Blackboard, maybe you should just send me the same message on a text. Just saying. Plus, I always have my cell phone with me. This is my schedule, basically what I am doing during the day, during the week. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, I am on Alice campus and I am in class straight through from 8 until 2. I have no breaks in between except for moving classrooms or moving students. And then from 2 to 3.30, I am going to be working on setting up for micro. But during that time when I'm not actually teaching, if you text me, I can still check my phone. If you need to know where I'm at, that's the best way to kind of know what I'm doing and where I'm at. Syllabus and tentative schedule. Again, this is all under course information. Okay, course information. So syllabus and tentative schedule. If you click this folder, you've got access to a Word document that is my syllabus. It has information on um, what the class is, what it entails, what textbooks you need, if you need textbooks, and your schedule. But let's say I don't want to do that. My advice would be open it once and print it and keep a hard copy so that you can flip through it and see what you need to see on that syllabus. Also, if you scroll down, the schedule that is on that syllabus is right here. And it's color coded. You've got orange, yellow, green, and red. And you can see the red days are the highlighted days are the same like color coded days. You look down here at the bottom, orange means that assignments, unit assignments will open. Yellow means that they are due. It's the date that they are due. Green means that you've got an exam opening. Red means that you've got an exam due. This is in your syllabus. So if you need it, Take advantage of the fact that it's there and use it. But if you don't have the hard copy and you just want a quick look, this is available to you. Going back to course information. Right under syllabus and tentative schedule, you've got your McGraw-Hill information. So because you have all-inclusive access, you just have to follow the link below, this one, that should have the correct section number that matches the Blackboard page that you have access to. Each class has its own individual McGraw-Hill page and you have to have the right one. This example that I am showing you is for section 0002, 
but there's also a section 201 and I believe 0001. That's gonna look different on your Blackboard page. Now, this is a big thing. Last semester, I had people who would forget their passwords or their username and just kind of make something new up. Don't do that. Whatever you initially log on with when you register, that's what you need to keep using because if you have multiple accounts, I'm going to delete them. You need one account and that's the account you stick with all semester. You have to write it down in your book, your notebook, your spiral, put it in your phone, whatever. You need to use the same thing. If you have used Connect before, you can still log in with that information, but it'll just create a second account. And I don't want to have to look for grades in multiple accounts. It's just not going to happen. So one account, please, and make sure you keep track of what you used. It'll give you access to your online quizzes, homework, virtual labs, whatever it is. For this, it's just going to be quizzes, homework, smart book, and required homework assignments. Now, do me a favor, and when you register, use the same name as what CBC has. First name, last name. The interface between McGraw-Hill Connect and Blackboard needs to be such that they recognize who you are so they can transfer your grades. If it doesn't, there's a good chance your grades aren't going to get transferred. So try as hard as you can to use your CBC email and use the same name that CBC has for you. Whether you use a nickname or not, which you can tell me, you can give me the name that you prefer. You can give me the pronouns that you prefer. But for the significance of getting your grades transferred, Please use the same name, first name, last name, and email from CBC. It would make my life easier. Problems with Connect. So Connect itself is software. I know how to do a lot of things, but computers is not one of them. And with that in mind, that means that if you're having issues getting Connect to work, it's not working in your browser, it's not working on your computer, you call this phone number. If you don't want to call that phone number, you can chat. Here is the time frames that it's available, Eastern Standard Time, for you to call and get help with whatever you need. But if you call me and say, hey, Miss Williams, it's not working, I'm going to say, have you called the 1-800 number? Because I don't know how to fix a computer. If you need me to reset something, that's completely different. But fixing a computer, I don't know how to do that. That's what this is for. Life size is equivalent to FaceTime. It will allow us to interact online um, so that if you need help, I can help you. I will be available specifically for AMP 1 from 9 to 10 on Monday, Wednesdays. Then I've got just general tutoring hours from 12 to 2 and from 3.30 to 5. If you need a different time, just let me know. As well as that, if nobody shows up in the first 10 minutes, I'm logging off because I actually do have things to do. So this 12 to 2, I'm not going to sit by myself with my computer on life size going, okay, I guess I'll just wait. If nobody shows up in 10 minutes, I'll log off. Now, with that idea, Let's say that you can't meet at 12, but you can meet me at 1240. If that's the case, at 1240, you can meet me, text me and say, hey, Miss Williams, I can't show up at 12, but I can show up at 1240. Well, I'll still log on at 12. If nobody shows up, I'll log off at 1210, set an alarm on my phone for 1235, and log on at 1235 so that by the time 1240 rolls around, I can be there to meet with you. The whole point of life size is that if you need help with something, let's say that in the lecture you didn't understand what I said or you didn't understand how I explained it, I should be able to explain it a different way, hopefully one of the ways that you will understand. I can draw pictures, I can talk to you about it, but if you need help, this is what this is for. If you are using the app on your phone, it will ask you for an extension. For my specific classroom, this is the extension. 
And again, for specifically AP1, it's Monday, Wednesday, 9 to 10, but we can meet at any time that I'm free. That was course information. Let's move down from there to course content right here. So course content is going to have your quizzes, like your syllabus quiz and your proctorio introduction, which I haven't gotten up yet, but I will. But it also has your units. You have four units, unit one, two, three, and four, that each cover specific chapters. So the unit one folder will have the PowerPoint presentations, the lecture recordings, the quizzes. Those quizzes I talked about on McGraw-Hill Connect, this is where you find them, and you click and it actually takes you to McGraw-Hill Connect. You have a required homework assignment for this specific unit. That required homework assignment, notice how it says required? That's 15% of your exam grade. I think in unit two, it's 25% of your exam grade. That means that you have to do it. Don't ignore it, you have to do it since it says required. And finally, you've got your smart book assignments, which are bonus point assignments. Each unit has the opportunity to do these smart book assignments for five points. With four units, that's 20 points, that's two letter grades. If you decide not to do them, that's on you. But if you do unit one smart book assignments, all four, unit two smart book assignments, all four, unit three smart book assignments, all four, unit four smart book assignments, all three, you get five points per unit. Now, if you don't do all of them, you don't get the point. But if you do them all, that's 20 points. Again, it's optional though, you don't have to get those bonus point assignments. You'll notice that that's where it ends right now. When the exam opens, there will be a fourth, a fourth, yeah, no, fifth folder down here that you will also have access to. Now something else, just so you're aware, you'll notice that there are things with these folders, descriptions, information with them. When you go to course content, Read what it says, because sometimes it's really important. Sometimes it's very important, and it's important that you understand what it means so that you do things correctly. So please take the time to read that. As you can see, you've got four units, and as time passes, they will become more filled. For right now, in the other unit folders, since we're going to start with unit one, you will only have access to the PowerPoints and the recorded lectures. As the assignments open, you'll get the quizzes and the smart book and the required homework, etc. Moving on from course content, announcements. So you should be checking your announcements because when I do have to communicate with my whole class, this is how I do it. It's easiest to do it this way where I make an announcement and whether I'm delaying the start of something or I'm moving something up as far as date that it's due, whatever that happens to be, this is where I tell you. When I open assignments, I announce it here. When I open assignment, I usually give a due date so you know when it's due. That happens here. Keep up to date with the announcements. My grades, will have all of your grades on it. It's right below announcements. When you say, hey, Miss Williams, what's my average right now? I don't know, but you know what you can do? You can come here and you can look at the grades. And since you have how to calculate your grade on the syllabus, you can do that. Although, kind of, the weighted total kind of keeps a running tally. The only problem is that with the weighted total, if you've only done quizzes, it doesn't count that as 25%, it counts it as 100%. So you're not really getting a true measure of what your grade is. If you calculate it yourself, you will. 
Below my grades is male. Male, right there. When you go to mail, you can see you've got your inbox, your sent items. You can create a message. So if you create a message and then go to this button right here, you have a whole list of people. But if you go to the bottom of that list normally, there I am. Highlight, use your little arrow right here to put me in the recipients. And then just like a normal message, you've got a subject, you've got the body, and you can send me an email message. Again though, remember, I'm bad at checking my email. So if you really need to get a hold of me, please text me. If you want something with an answer three weeks later, feel free to email me. So those are the important things in Blackboard that you need to be aware of.